this Math 99, we're looking at section 6.6, .6, and we're dealing with exponential and log functions. Um, so solving them, basically, is what we're going to do. Let me get a couple things up here. So uh, I have a couple of equations here to solve, and notice they're both, uh, they have this exponential exponent element to them, like it's 3 to something equals 3 to something else, or 5 to something equals 5 to something else. Now, one thing that's nice, uh, kind of convenient, is when I have the same base like this, um, I can actually just set the exponents equal to each other. And hopefully that makes sense. 3 to some power equals 3 to some power. That means those powers must be equal to each other. So to solve this out, I can just say uh, this must be true. And then it's just a little bit of algebra to solve it out from there. So to solve this, I would subtract 2x from both sides, add 7, you know how to do this, 2x is 6, so x must be 3, and if I plug it back in, I would see that 3 to whatever that is equals 3 to whatever that is, and they're the same exponent, right? They're the same power. Similarly, 5 to something equals 5 to something else. Uh, since it's the same base, now if these were different bases, I would have to deal with it, but now that they're the same base, I can just put the exponents equal to each other and then solve that out. So here's two uh, problems where they don't have the same base. Notice this is a base 8, this is a base 16, this is a 4, this is a 256. So I'm going to try and figure out if I can rewrite these so they have the same base, and then I can just put the exponents equal to each other. So this first one, this is already a base 4, 4 to the x minus 5. So 256, if I could write that as 4 to some power, it would also work. I could grab my calculator, guess and check. This one works out. This is 4 to the 4th. So now that I have 4 to the 4th equals 4 to the x minus 5, I can set this equal to 4 equals x minus 5 because they have the same base. So the exponents must be equal. Then just solve that, right? Add 5 to both sides, x equals 9. And notice what I end up with is 4 to the 4th, which is that. Okay, this next one. Uh, this is 8 to some power, and this is 16 to some power. So if I think about 8 and 16, I'm going to try and find the same base. Uh, well, 2. I, I could write these in terms of 2. In other words, I know that 8 is 2 to the 3rd power, and I know that 16 is 2 to the 4th power. So this 8, I'm going to write it as 2 to the 3rd power, and that's still taken to the x plus 2. And the 16, I'm going to write it to the 2 to the 4th power, which is still taken to the x plus 1. And one of the things I know is when I have an exponent to an exponent, a power to a power, I just multiply. In other words, this is the same as 2 to the 3 times x plus 2, and the same as 2 to the 4 times x. And so notice what we've done is we've converted these bases so that now we have the same base. And so now if I have 2 to some power equals 2 to some power, the powers must be equal to each other. 3 times x plus 2 must equal 4 times x plus 1. And then I can just solve that out. Distribute that. Distribute that. Subtract 3. Subtract 4. And I think x is equal. All right. So here's uh, two more to deal with. And these, to make these the same base, I'm going to have to think about what it means to take a square root. A square root is the same as a 1 half power. So I could rewrite this as 2 to the x, uh, to the 5 times x equals 2 to the 1 half. So then I have 5x equals 1 half, and I'm on my way to solve that as well. Keep going. A negative exponent, 1 over x to the a is the same as x to the negative a. Uh, dividing is negative exponent, so it's the same thing. So I could rewrite this one as 3 to the negative third. I have the same base, x minus 3 equals negative 3 and I'm on my way, and I can solve those. So notice that uh, we were dealing with um, things where we just made the bases the same, um, and what we can do, we can, we can think the same sorts of things with like logarithms. If I had like a log equals a log, I could do the same idea. But let's, let's expand on this a little bit. Let's use some equations. All right, so let's use some equations where we're actually not going to be able to set the bases the same. Notice this is a base e, this is a base 10. What we're going to do is we're going to use some logarithms to, to solve these ones out. 
So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get that exponential piece all alone. So divide both sides by 20, right? Because that's 20 times that. So 10 divided by 20 is uh, 5. <laughs> and now e to the 2t. What I'm going to do is I'm going to undo the e with a natural log, right? A log base e. Remember, natural log equals log base e. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as a log statement. I can say natural log of 5 is equal to the exponent. Logarithms spit out exponents. So then what I can do, move this. That natural log of 5, that's just a number. And I can just get it in my calculator. So I'll keep going from here. Divide both sides by 2. So t is the natural log of 5 divided by 2. And if I wanted to figure out what that was, grab my calculator and just go uh, natural log of 5. Close off the parentheses divide by 2, it's about 0 0.805. So let's take a look at this next one. 4 times e to some power plus 5 equals 12. So eventually I'm going to use natural log to undo this e part. But first, I need to isolate that, that e so I can use natural log. So I just think of this as like 4 times something plus 5 equals 12. So let me get the something all alone. Uh, subtract 5 from both sides. We've got 7. Divide by 4. I'll just leave this as 7 elevenths. And then now that I have e all alone, now I can use natural log. So I'm going to rewrite this as a log statement, a log base e statement, which is natural log 7 elevenths equals the exponent. And then if I'm going to keep solving this, I divide by 2 or multiply by a half. And again, I can plug that into my calculator and get a decimal approximation. All right, so this next one, I have 10 to some power is this number. Um, so to undo 10 to the, that's going to be a log base 10, which is just log. So I'm going to rewrite this as log base 10, implied base 10, of 50,000 equals the exponent, equals the x plus 3. Log of 50,000 is just a number. Uh, I'm going to subtract 3 from that. So I have basically like negative 3. And if I want to know if that is on my calculator, I can plug it in. Uh, now I'm going to use the log button, not the ln button, because it's log. <laughs> log of 50,000, close up those parentheses, subtract 3, and I get about uh, 1.69. So let's take a peek at this one. 7 uh, times e to the 2x equals negative 5. So I'm going to use natural log to undo that e. So divide everything by 7. Got e to the 2x equals negative 5 sevenths. Um, I might see a problem right off the bat, but if I don't, I'll trudge on natural log. So 2x equals natural log of negative 5 sevenths. And actually, natural log of negative 5 sevenths is going to cause me some trouble. If I try to put that in my calculator, I should get a domain error. Yeah, I get a non-real answer. So from here, I'll say uh, no real solution. It's because I'm trying to take natural log of a, of a negative number. E to some power is going to be positive. A positive number times 7 is not going to equal negative 5 if I, if I limit myself to the real number. All right, this next problem is a special type. I have E to the 2x minus E to the x equals some number. I can't just natural log right now um, because of this subtraction. So I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to think of this. It's not a quadratic, but it's in a quadratic form. Uh, let me get it equal to zero. Subtract 56 from both sides. Notice I have some middle term e to the x, and then I have basically that term squared, e to the 2x is e to the x squared. So I have something squared minus something minus 56. That's not a quadratic, but it's, it's in a quadratic form. And this is what I mean by that. I'm going to do a little substitution just to turn, turn off my mind for a second. So a, I'm going to let a equal e to the x. a equals that middle term. And so that means that a squared would equal e to the x squared, which is e to the 2x. And now I'm going to substitute those in. So this e to the 2x, I'm just going to write it as a squared. This e to the x, I'm just going to write it as a. And then now from here, I'm going to solve this quadratic. I'm going to just going to forget about the e for a sec. I know I can solve this. Things that multiply to negative 56 add to negative 1, I think would be a negative 8. Positive 7. So that would mean that a is 8. Um, 
or negative seven. Great, now that feels good, but I'm not solving for A, I'm solving for X. So I know what A can be, A can be seven, a negative seven or eight, but that means since A is equal to E to the X, E to the X is equal to those things. So E to the X, oops, I'm gonna switch back to uh, black, try to at least. Maybe I won't. Uh, e to the x equals 8, and e to the x equals negative 7. And now I can solve those using natural log. So x equals natural log of 8, natural log of negative 7. Just had a problem with that. Can't take natural log of a negative number and get a, get a real number. So my answer is natural log of 8, which I could do in my calculator and get approximation for it. Pick away at a couple more of these. Uh, 2 times the natural log of x plus 3. 7. I've got a natural log in it. You know how when I was undoing E, I was using natural log? So now to undo natural log, I'm going to use E. So let me get that natural log all alone. Subtract 3 from both sides. Divide by 2. So now I have natural log of x equals 2. Remember, natural log is log base E. So if I rewrite this, this means x equals E to the second power. And so there's an exact answer. If I want to get a decimal approximation for it on my calculator, I'm just going to go e to the second and get my about 7.3. All right, three more problems I'm going to pick away at. So 2 times natural log of 6x equals 7. I'm eventually going to use e to undo that natural log. But first, since it's 2 times that, I'm going to divide both sides by 2 first. So I got natural log of 6x equals 7 halves. If you write that as 3.5, that's fine. The way I undo natural log is with e to the, so I know that 6x equals e to the 7 halves. And now divide by 6 or multiply by 1 sixth. So 1 sixth times e to the 7 halves. I can do that on my calculator and get a decimal approximate. Next one, very similar. Divide both sides by 2. Get rid of that natural log by using e to the, remember it's log base e, so I could rewrite it as e to the fifth equals x plus one. Subtract one, shove that into my calculator, get a decimal approximation. Should look something like this, e to the fifth. Remember to close off the parentheses um, and then subtract, I think it was a one. Okay, and last one, natural log of this equals natural log of that. This is just like the first problems we were doing, like where we had the same base. If it's if they're both the same logarithm, then these the things that are inside the logarithms have to be equal to each other. You know, like natural log is an operator, right? If I go run x squared through this operator and get an answer, it's the same answer as if I run 2x plus 3 through this operator. Um, that means that these must be equal to each other. So subtract 2x from both sides. Subtract three, five got a quadratic. I could run it through quadratic formula or factor it, x minus three times x plus one. So x must be three or negative one. And then now I'm just gonna check that nothing makes me take the natural log of a negative number. Three is fine. If I plug in negative one, negative one squared is positive one, that's okay. Negative two times one plus three is positive one, that's okay. I will take both of those answers. Hey, let me know what questions you have. And um, good luck on the assignment.